Jeremy Sockman here today with a look at a movie with big ideals to talk about the big issues that face us all. It's Love and Death from 1975 starring Woody Allen and Diane Keaton. But by talking about the big subjects, it's also trying to do something else. So let's take a look. Mr. Big Shot Napoleon invades Austria, and Boris Grushenko, played by Woody Allen, is forced to enlist in the Russian army. He's a bit of a screw-up, but manages to become a war hero anyway. He returns home and wants to marry Sonia, played by Diane Keaton, who's not that into that idea, but figuring he's going to die in a duel anyway, agrees to it. Whoops, he survives, and now they're man and wife. <sighs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Look at the kid, she's, she's so happy, she's speechless. So now Napoleon invades Russia, and Boris figures it's time to run away. But Sonia convinces him to assassinate the guy at his headquarters in Moscow. So they disguise themselves up and try, but of course it goes badly, and Boris is captured. He has a vision that he's going to be pardoned at the last second, but, spoiler alert, he isn't, and his ghost waves bye-bye to Sonia. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm dead. What's it like? Uh, what's it like? Uh, you know the chicken at Tresky's restaurant? Yeah. It's worse. Now, Love and Death certainly does talk about the big subjects of both love and death, but it's the how it does it that might rub you the wrong way. It's not the slapstick, puns, one-liners, or period-accurate costumes and settings. It's the liberal use of put-downs about classical Russian literature. Napoleon has invaded Austria! Why, is that a curvoisier? At last! A chance to taste the glories of battle! Well, check with you when it's over. I'll be in the game room. You see, Love and Death has a condescending attitude towards those phone book-sized dour classics. War and Peace, The Brothers Karamazov, Crime and Punishment, Fathers and Sons, etc, etc. And by putting their philosophizing about the human condition up on screen with deadpan seriousness amidst comic goofiness, he's showing you just how silly they truly are when not being hyped up by Van Dyke Russian lit PhD students. Woody Allen wants to show you how silly it is to brag about reading all those really big books and acting all high and mighty about it, so he does the same things they do and makes the same philosophical points in under 90 minutes. Talk about efficiency. Well, murder is immoral. Immorality is subjective. Yes, but subjectivity is objective. Not in an irrational scheme of perception. Perception is irrational and implies imminence. But judgment of any system or a priori relation of phenomena exists in any rational or metaphysical or at least epistemological contradiction to an abstract and empirical concept such as being or to be or to occur in the thing itself or of the thing itself. Yeah, I've said that many times. I can really get behind that idea of time management, but it's the unexpected outcomes of love and death that we don't talk about that can easily be forgotten. If more people realize what Woody's done, there will be fewer people taking Russian literature in university, which threatens to bring down a huge pillar of our economy. What will the universities and colleges do with empty classrooms? What will the professors teach if no one shows up? But more importantly, how will the authors make money if nobody buys their books anymore? You're taking cash right out of Tolstoy's pockets, Woody. Dude needs to eat too, man. Not cool. That is incredibly jejun. So while there's lots to like about love and death, it's the unforeseen consequences of such a dangerous movie that gives me pause. That's why I'm Jeremy Stockman, and I'm giving Woody Allen's send-up of Big Russian Lit a hard pass. Something's missing. What? I don't know. I feel a void at the center of my being. What kind of void? Well, an empty void. An empty void? Yes, I felt a full void about a month ago, but it was just something I ate. Mm -hmm.